Hey, Bruce. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm awesome. How are you? Uh, I'm doing fine. Uh, Bruce, uh, just before we talk Survivor, I know you're uh, uh, really pumped up to uh, get to chat. I just want to make sure uh, health wise, everything is good. No uh, lingering effects from the Survivor experience. Everything is perfect. Everything okay. is absolutely perfect. All right, Bruce. Well, let's talk about uh, what exactly happened to you because um, it just seemed like, and this is very uh, understandable, you just were so fired up to jump out of the gate uh, that just hit that first obstacle. Was that what it was? Just like way too much adrenaline coming out of the gate? You know, um, I've always been one to go 110% with whatever it is that I do. Um, and it was actually the first obstacle was when I, we went underneath the log. Um, the, I hit the second obstacle on the way down. Um, and it's, I'm not blaming it on anybody else other than myself and my shirt that I was wearing. The shirt. <laughs> what was the shirt's problem? The shirt's problem. Listen, I, <laughs> I bought the shirt. I'm like, yes, I love the shirt, but I'm wearing this shirt today. I can go like this. I can do all sorts of good stuff with it. With that shirt, I could just go like this. The shirt was too tight. It was too tight. It wasn't a flexible material. So when I put my arm down, my elbow, yeah. I had a little stuff right here. There we so go. Were you thinking ahead of like, hey, I'm going to be out there 26 days. I'm going to lose 25 pounds. So let me buy the shirt a little small. You've been there. You yeah. know what I'm talking about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Bruce, we have to talk about this was some big news that I heard. I just listened this morning to the brand new official Survivor podcast on fire with Jeff Probst. And I heard you. But then after Jeff Probst hung up with you, I heard the big announcement that you have been officially named and invited to have an open invitation to come back for a future season. Now, how does this, is this like money in the bank pass? Do you just get to call in like, I'm ready, put me in. Um, I don't know the particulars in regards to it, but I'm, I, I am overjoyed and overwhelmed. It's, you know, there's something to be said. I had a bunch of people at my watch party yesterday because I knew that this was my hurrah. So yeah. I got as many people as I could. And and the people, everyone that was there came to me and they're like, You're going back on that show. We're gonna have we're gonna we're gonna start a hashtag. Get Bruce back on Survivor. Whatever the hashtag Don't was. need it. So, <laughs> it was all set in motion. I didn't even know. Rob, I had my phone in my pocket and, and I can't see my phone. I can't see because I, I need my glasses. I didn't take my glasses with me, but it all comes to my watch. So it vibrates on my watch every time I get a message. So at the beginning, bzz, 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 kept getting it all. And then while the sh show was airing, nothing. And then at the end, bzz, 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 just kept going for at least 30 minutes. So then I get home. My wife is already laying in bed. She's scrolling through all the well wishes, this, that, and the other from all of our friends and family. And I'm like, let me grab my phone. So I, I get in bed. I put my glasses on, lay in bed, and I look at my phone, and it's like, Bruce, Bruce. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. And then there was a link. So I clicked on the link, and it went to the podcast. And going through the sin and listen, listen, and all of a sudden, Jeff's like, here's a big announcement. Cue the music. And <laughs> cue the music, and he says it. When I tell you, I cried like a baby. Wow. I am not going to lie to you. It was yeah. some of the greatest news, aside from the birth of my kids, the marriage to my wife, um, my being adopted as a kid, like that was right up top yeah. of all of that. It was so, amazing. Bruce, are you currently in training now for your return to Survivor? Do I look it? I have made I don't, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Look good. Look good. Okay. All right. So, Bruce, you now. I'm really interested to know because you were on the beach for that one day, but you also, you know, sustained that injury. So were you even able to like think about the game or were you sort of like a, like business as usual? And then, you know, the symptoms started to come back really hard at nighttime. I like that you said that it was, it was business as usual. It was, you know, we, we get to the beach and we have things that need to get done. Like I'm not even I, like, there's no way to get around it. If you have to get things done, you have to get them done. So I'm helping getting bamboo. I'm helping with with all the things that need to be done. And it was like a it was a gradual decline over the course of the day. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, it was like a seven when it happened, and a seven all day, and at the end of the day, it was a ten. Like that's how bad it was—a ten out of ten for pain. Okay, great. Well, then you could tell us a little bit about your interactions with the members of your tribe. Again, just based off of what you witnessed out there on the beach, uh, we actually heard Carolyn uh, say later on in the episode that the only person I talked to was Bruce. Uh, did you have strategic conversations with Carolyn, and what was that like? Our conversations were were on the human level. And yeah. nothing to do with the game, which is absolutely awesome. Um, you know, I was able to bond with her and have conversations with her. She, you know, we talked about my kids, her kids, and that's that's basically what it came down to. Um, that's that's one of the things that I miss, um, and I was kind of upset because when I left as early as I did, I didn't have the ability to strategic to strategically talk to people just because my mind wasn't there. Yeah. Like I just wasn't thinking about you know strategizing and doing all this other stuff and hey who's this hey what do you think about no i none of that happened none of it okay so but based off of your personal conversations with carolyn did the edit accurately represent uh what it was like to live with carolyn i'm gonna be honest with you i was at a party last night i didn't see the i didn't see the whole entire thing i didn't see that interaction so i can't comment on it I can't. okay I wish all right I could. <laughs> okay uh, but the vibe of what you saw from Carolyn, that was like uh, what she's like in real life. Yeah, Carolyn is is beautiful. She's yeah. an amazing human being. Amazing okay. human being. All right. Uh, how about uh, Jam Jam? <laughs> Larger than life, man. I love him. He's awesome. Okay. Uh, Carson? Carson. Carson is awesome, too. Everybody, mm -hmm. listen, I'm going to put a full blanket over all. Yeah. Every single person is there. I love them all. When And I will tell you, when I was, I was in you know my the hospital when i had left you know my questions were in regards to my tribe and i thought about my tribe when i was there and, and you know my family obviously they the thought was there with them um but i thought about my tribe and how they were going to do and how i felt like i was letting them down because i had yeah. left you know so but every single person all of them all of them just absolutely amazing people did you have a chance to stumble upon the bird cage during your time on the island i did I did. Okay. We, we, we as a group saw it. What were your thoughts about uh, how to operate around the birdcage? Put your hands in like this and just pull it open and grab the yes. thing out. <laughs> that was my thought. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because correct me if I'm wrong, you spoke in the preseason about not really wanting to be somebody who was really very uh, over eager to go out and look for advantages. That is correct. You know, and that that's that's my thought process in the game because it's you know, it's a social game. You want to be social. You want to be able to know who people are. And even when with my head hurting the way that it was, me and Carolyn going for that for a walk and talking about who she is and who I am, that held more weight than looking at a birdcage and sitting there with something inside of it, like that that potential beware advantage. You know, so I'm aware of that. Like I know that that happened in Jamal Ship and got burned by that. Like, you know, I saw that and I'm like, ah, okay, yeah, gotcha. That's right, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so that was it. So based off of your time just on day one, did you start to have a sense of like who you thought might be in some trouble in the tribe? Um, I, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to say I thought I was. Yeah, I thought I was clearly at that moment in time, if I were not to. You know, brag, I was stronger than everyone on the tribe. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can say that for myself personally, but, but I was now diminished. I was now a weak link in the tribe. Mm -hmm. you know? And, and the, 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 I'm sorry, but the doctor said, Bruce, go back to camp. Don't do anything. Just go back to camp. We need you to get better. Just, you know, the tribe will be okay. Oh, hell no. I go back and I'm cutting bamboo and I'm moving stuff and uh, let's do this. I'm helping with the fire. Like, you know, that's because this game, even though it's social, it's a social experiment, it's still this still strategy that goes on. And if I'm sitting there like you know, laying back, yeah. I'm out. Were there any fun moments that you had with the tribe on day one that we didn't get to see in the premiere? <sighs> um, I'm going to say yes, they were. Yeah. But as far as for me being able to recall them to the the extent of what they were yeah i i really can't like i i was just it was all more about my head and what was going on okay 
Bruce, so you did all this preparation to go out there and then got right up to the fin- to the starting line and got in, got in, into the game before uh, the injury. Is there anything that you did prep-wise uh, to get ready for Survivor that you feel like that now, as you're somebody who's going to get ready to go back eventually, that you would do differently? Um. Yes, I would be more flexible. <laughs> yes. Um, but no, I, you know, the prep that I did, you know, I, I ate a lot. I, I swam at the pool, you know, not well, but I swam at the pool, um, you know, went to the gym on a regular basis. I, you know, the food that I was eating was good food. Um, you know, I don't, there wouldn't be anything different. I would prep again the same way. I would probably take a little bit different of a, of a tact by way of, um, you know, how often I do things um, and then kind of go from there. But it was, there, there really wouldn't be that much of a change because I know that what I did before would have probably helped me very well in the game aside from being flexible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I it, definitely got sure. Yes. <laughs> well, now we know that. Now we know <laughs> stretchable fabric is very important. Okay. And then as, you know, a big fan who goes out there, is there anything that a – fan who is going to go out on survivor like what's the one thing they can't prepare for they they cannot they cannot prepare for not being with your family yeah that that's that's the biggest part of it all you can't you know you can take someone you know you put them in a dark room for five days and they know that they can come out. Hey, there's my family. No, there's nothing like yeah. not being able to talk to your family, see what's going on. Like I miss my kids, you know, softball and baseball playoffs. Like that's, yeah. that's tough mentally. Well, I heard you tell Jeff that you uh, got home from survivor and went right to one of the games. And you know, Bruce, that I played survivor as a much younger man. And so when I did it, Oh wow, this is so fun. Well, great. Uh, 39 days. Wonderful. But as a adult, as a dad, uh, you know, the, the prospect of then, you know, going to go do an adventure like this, like, I, I have no idea what that would be like. Like, I, I think it would be very difficult. Yeah. And it is, it, it's extremely difficult. And I got the buy-in from everyone in my household. It wasn't just me saying, ha, um, I'm, you know, this big, huge person that wants to be on TV and it's all about me. No, I got the buy-in from them. And once they gave me the buy-in, once they all said it was okay, yes, Dad, this is your dream. This is what you love. You love Survivor. We've watched it every every year with you, um, except for episode one through three of season one. I had to go back and watch them because mm-hmm. I was late. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my they they all gave me the buy-in, and and once once you get that, it's like okay, now it gives you the ability to go to the gym all the time. It gives you the ability to you know eat the food that's in the house and say, don't touch that. I need to eat it because I need it. Like it's so much easier to do those kind of things, but everybody's going to buy it. Okay. Well, Bruce, uh, this is, you know, just a pit stop here on your survivor journey. (laughs) So we're looking forward to uh, seeing you again sometime in the, in the near future. I appreciate it. (laughs) All right. Okay. Bruce. uh, All right. Keep in touch. Okay. All the best to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye. Bye.